We all drink water, don't we? Have you ever thought that the way we access drinkable water and manage sewage has enormous impacts on the form of our built environment and the perception we have of it? My name is David, and for my thesis project with Living in Northern Quebec, I wanted to take a step back from architecture and think about how infrastructure interrelates with the notions of urbanization in the Arctic. In this video, we'll analyze two types of water systems that can be found in the Arctic. And by doing so, we'll be able to compare the urbanity of the villages of Nunavik with that of the cities of Greenland. First, let's define what infrastructure means. Infrastructures are constructed networks that allow the movement of things, people, or even ideas across space. In my research, I have focused on the objects that compose the water infrastructure. Let's dive in our first study case, the delivery service. This water infrastructure takes the form of a moving object in space, the tanker truck. The system is modular because the trucks and the indoor tanks that compose it are standardized and interchangeable. This modularity, however, requires a strong standardization of space as we will see. The water is first transported from the source to a treatment and pumping station. There, the tank of the truck is filled manually by an employee. The truck then travels through the village to fill the empty tanks of the buildings. For the system to be efficient, the tanker truck must be able to get close to houses. Clearance between constructions must therefore have been planned so that the truck can pass easily. To dispose of the wastewater, another truck is required. Wastewater is therefore pumped into the second truck to be emptied into settling lagoons outside the villages. We find the shape of the truck and its imprint everywhere in the urban form of the villages of Nunavik. The streets are wide enough for two trucks to pass at the same time and the gaps between the buildings allow trucks to quickly park. The use of these trucks limits construction on slopes as the latter cannot climb slopes of more than a few degrees. The use of trucks is one of the reasons the villages of Nunavik are flat and spread on the land. It limits the verticality and the densification of the villages. The second system is the one found in Greenlandic cities and is nicknamed the Technological Network. Water is first transported from the source to a treatment and pumping station. From there, water is pumped through the piping network of the city. Each building is connected to the drinkable water network and the sewage network. These networks include power lines and telecommunication wires. The landscape is thus freed from the aerial wiring. Unlike the tanker truck, the pipes adapt to the topography of the land. By being above the ground, the pipes, however, create limits that are visible in the city. Some pipes are more difficult to cross than others. Here, we see an intervention that tries to soften the limit created by this pipeline. This strategy works, but it's when the linearity of the network is taken into account in the design that a strong coupling takes place between the technical and the civic. In Nook and Zissimut, we find this kind of sidewalk and elevated staircases in several places. They allow pedestrians to cross the city efficiently without detours. By building on slopes and on several levels, a much higher density can be achieved without increasing its perception. This verticality gives visual access to the land from the buildings and the city. By standing vertically, the city itself takes part of the landscape. It becomes a landscape entity that can be observed from the territory. Knowing that permafrost tends to melt due to climate change, the construction industry of Nunavik has to reinvent itself with new construction techniques, innovative infrastructures and adapted buildings that will allow Nunavimut to face the challenges of the 21st century. 